Welcome to the Quinnipiac Cybersecurity Podcast. As you know, we do a weekly program with thought leaders from the cybersecurity field. I'm Fred Scholl. I'm the director of the Masters in Cybersecurity degree program. And this week, I'm really excited to have Mike Wiebe on the program. Mike, welcome. Thank you, Fred. I'm really glad to be here. Now, I'm going to let Mike introduce himself in detail, but Mike is a kind of a renaissance man in the field of risk management. He's been doing it for many years from different aspects, both cybersecurity risk management and business risk. And we're going to be talking about that topic today. But why don't you tell uh, our listeners a little more about what you've done and your perspective on risk? Okay, thank you, Fred. So first thing is, I think renaissance man is a nice way of saying he's old. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> um, you should be really proud, too, of what you've accomplished there with this MS in cybersecurity. I've been doing a little more research on it. Sounds like a great program. Well, my background is I studied civil engineering in college um, f more than four decades ago. Um, and I, I started out my first job as a fire protection engineer for an insurance company. So I was doing automatic sprinkler tests and designs and uh, building inspections. Um, I also worked for a mining company that had a hard rock mine. I was in the risk management department there. We had uh, some pretty serious risks, as you can imagine. The number one being 250 people going a quarter of a mile down in an elevator with a single cable. Most modern elevators have more than one, but that was not what the mining industry did. <laughs> um, and I spent most of my career at, at IBM. And when I was, when I left, I was the worldwide risk manager of IBM. And then I worked for a couple global insurance brokers uh, and then started my own firm. I have three young uh, partners, started my own firm in 2001. So I've been doing this risk management consulting and some insurance work um, my whole career, the whole time I've been in business. So uh, the topic today is, in my expertise, my firm has been, bought, been providing enterprise risk management services to our clients. Uh, that's what we do. And we help businesses try to figure out, well, what can go wrong? <laughs> um, we don't pretend to be able to help businesses in all areas. Um, and we don't pretend to be experts in marketing risk but all other aspects of risk, we try to help our, our clients in. And uh, the businesses typically have pretty traditional risk, fire risk, a plant burns down, power outage. Um, but nowadays, a customer list can be stolen by someone sitting in Ukraine. And that's a big risk, and um, it creates a huge competitive disadvantage. So it's a big risk to, our, to businesses. And that's why cybersecurity, that's why we're the subject today is risk management cybersecurity. So, My role, and most times a role of a risk manager in uh, an enterprise is to organize and train um, senior managers, key knowledge holders about how to address a crisis, be prepared for it, evaluate what the potential risks are of an organization, and virtually every enterprise nowadays has a cybersecurity risk. So there's always that, that focus. So let me kind of follow up on that. So you're, you have, I think risk management is in your DNA, I guess, uh, in terms of you know, the mining company and the recent work on cybersecurity. So I think our program, our master's degree program definitely includes threats, defenses, risk management, all these types of things. In the, in the recent situation with the pandemic that obviously everybody's familiar with, I've gotten, the, a lot of people have said, maybe governments weren't well organized enough, we didn't predict this. What are your, you know, is risk management taking a big hit? Is it, is it do, do you see that people are going to feel, well, we couldn't avoid this pandemic, what do we need to do risk management for? What, what's the implications of the whole pandemic situation on the field of risk management? Well, the short answer is I think it's gonna elevate risk management. 
um, in general, both with businesses and with individual uh, individuals. The way we buy more insurance, you know, for our homeowners. I think there's going to be a trend to that. But um, a pandemic like this uh, is not a, a, a risk that an enterprise tries to manage on its own. Um, this is a global risk that has been well recognized for decades. Um, and it's up to government and the United Nations perhaps to address a risk like this um, and to help give guidance to businesses how they can survive it. Um, and the risk management aspect of this is to have the right personal protection equipment for healthcare providers, to, to have uh, vaccines, tests for vaccines that can mitigate the risk around uh, to, the, to the business. We're all, only talking about business risk here. Um, but it's definitely a global risk and it's up to government. It's very similar to the old days when lighthouses were constructed. Um, shippers, an individual shipper would not pay anything to get a lighthouse uh, constructed outside the harbor that it frequented because there were a lot of other shippers that would use the lighthouse. So no individual shipper would pay to get a lighthouse constructed or maintained. So it had to become a government role. And this is the same thing. No one wants to pay to prevent uh, uh, the coronavirus, coronavirus risk in China. Not in the US, but so it's gotta be on a global basis. However, individual businesses, and this is where enterprise risk comes in, can prepare for a crisis like this so that they're less vulnerable, uh, more competitive if they and survive, that, that to help them survive. There's no guarantee that whatever they do will eliminate the risk in, in terms of planning, will eliminate the risk 100%. Um, and it also depends on how much they're willing to spend, how much seems reasonable to spend to uh, prepare for a risk that has never happened in our lifetime. How so you... Go ahead. to answer your question, I think it's much more important now. It's, it's always been important, but it's going to get a much higher profile. That's so there are a lot of things we could talk about. I like your analogy with the lighthouses. Do you feel uh, that businesses or countries maybe should have built more pandemic lighthouses? Because I know looking at like country level risk registers and you had to talk from Bill Gates, the pandemic risk, both its impact and its likelihood was high, right? I think people recognize that. It's not like some That's surprise right. coming along. So how do, did we, did we fall short in preparation or, you know, any thoughts on what we need to do to, to fix uh, what happened here, not have it happen again? Well, it's human nature. That, it, that there's that old black, black swan theory that bad things don't happen until they do. <laughs> and I know so many businesses who operate on a hope and a prayer that that bad thing that could be a catastrophe to a particular business won't happen, especially young businesses. Um, as they get older and they get more mature, they have more at risk. So they're willing to spend more to manage the risk. Uh, I don't think the next, but the plan, planning for risk is like so many other things. You don't, the, what you plan for is likely not going to be the exact event that occurs. But, but planning gives you so much more as a business enterprise uh, in terms of being able to survive the, the next crisis or the next catastrophe. Even if you didn't plan for it, you have people in the organization now who's, who have a bit of a feeling of being battle tested. They've been through this, they've been through drills, or maybe they've been through a crisis that was relatively minor. I think that's a good point, the idea of drills. So do you, do you think that businesses, maybe small and medium-sized businesses should put more emphasis on response preparation. I think a lot of people tend to do risk assessments and then they decide we're going to mitigate it, we're going to avoid it or whatever. But 
is there room for more effort in the sort of uh, preparation phase and testing phase, especially with respect to cybersecurity? Well, especially with respect to cybersecurity, because um, the, print, the classic principles of risk management can absolutely be applied to uh, cybersecurity. And, and, and that's one of the most significant risks for any business. But the way to start it for a business is to determine internally through um, conversations and meetings with senior managers and, and key knowledge holders, what are the significant risks for a business? Um, they can't spend their lives addressing all these risks. There's a limited amount of time, so they have to make a decision, and this has to be a collaborative decision. Which ones do we invest money in planning for? And I would bet that more than 80% of the time, cybersecurity is going to be one of those that uh, succeeds the analysis succeeds the anal analysis that it is worth spending money to plan for and invest in it because it's so important. And this, uh, what we've learned from this pandemic so far with regard to cybersecurity is that most businesses have claimed that they've, you know, a big part of their workforce can or does work remotely and that they can operate fine with a good percentage of the uh, population working remotely. But for many businesses, this has required 100% work remotely. And um, so businesses that hadn't planned at all to have to make a change from 10% remote to 50% remote are at a great disadvantage in getting through this pandemic, especially initially to get up and running again um, when they have to be 100% remote. So planning for the crisis, I've been through meetings. I think you and I, I have been through at least one meeting where they all said, yeah, we can work remote, no problem. <laughs> we can just pick up and we can all work from home. And um, I know that it didn't go as smooth as they thought, not at all. Right. So now that we're all remote, probably a lot of us are going to stay remote. So what are your thoughts on the next big risk related to cyber or internet technology? Is this our last risk or are there other things that might come along given kind of the way things are going in the economy and what, you know, what, what should risk managers be thinking about now? Well, I think this is a great um, opportunity for all businesses and risk managers in particular uh, to strike while the iron is hot always and uh, take the message up to senior management. You know, they need a bigger budget this year and for the next couple of years to go through this crisis planning. And the odds are very high that uh, before this pandemic, whatever budget they asked for would have been curtailed a bit. Um, I bet there'll be instances where the budget will probably be increased more than the risk manager asked for. <laughs> <laughs> because one thing businesses tend to do is to throw money at problems when they have been severely experienced through a problem. Right. That's such a good point. So the whole dispersal of people and new technologies like Zoom and video, con all this, all these changes, are sure to bring up new cybersecurity risks. We don't know exactly what they are. So that's why I think your suggestion that more funds go into planning and preparation is a good one. Who knows what the next thing is going to be, but our whole incident response from where we are now is going to be a lot different from what it was when everybody was on the same building or campus. So, Yes. And I think another argument that risk managers within an enterprise can be successful with is that, um, by having the workforce 100% remote, um, businesses in that period of time, especially in the beginning when they were first setting up these uh, tech technology facilities, uh, they were very vulnerable. So there could have been malware planted that's going to become active later on. Um, so it's, it's uh, this has created a whole uh, scenario of possibilities 
that a business can go through and practice preparation for and determine whether or not they need training, which is cheaper than devices, tech, tech, technology devices generally, but a combination of both training and um, whatever the latest and greatest is in cybersecurity to, to limit the potential loss to the business and, and business and disruption. Thank you. Well, with that, um, we'll wind this up. Thank you so much, Mike, for sharing your expertise with the audience. I really appreciate it. And uh, I wish everybody the best. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll talk to you again next week. All right. Thank you, Fred. I really enjoyed it. You stay safe as well. Take care.